Hi people and hello my Chili Con Carnage crew, it is Chili here from Live Listen Erased and I'm bringing you a special episode, this one is in regards to Soundgarden's album. It is an album that turned 30 just a few days ago, it is of course the Super Unknown album and it is an incredible record for the 90s, for me, at least for me anyway, it is my favourite Soundgarden album and I know that there are going to be a few others who will of course cite other material of theirs saying this is going to be their favourite, such as Bad Motorfinger, and there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But for me, anyway, I just prefer Super Unknown. And I wanted to give a quick shout-out and talk about this record, because, you know, this album is a bit of a... Um, it's a bit of an... Un it's not unknown. It's a very known album. It's, it's a bit unusual as far as the band's catalogue goes. You know, the early days, the band were very much raw, uh, unrefined, almost punkish in their energy, I guess you could say. Straightforward, no shifts, and just rock and roll. Simple. Very, very simple rock and roll, I guess you could say. And, you know, when it came to, for example, uh, Bad Motor Finger, it's the band just being perfect in refining that sound. It's a great album, don't get me wrong. Bad Motor Finger, incredible perfection by the band. But I think with Super Unknown, the band just starts to do a little bit of experimentation for, you know, um, what they could do. And it it really shows that perfect balance, you know, walking the fine line of still keeping a foot with your old fans and your old style, while at the same time trying something different and just succeeding all in the same occasion. And you can really hear that on, you know, the leading singles such as Spoon Man, which was a very odd track for its day because, you know, you've taken a street performer, the legendary Spoon Man himself, into the recording sessions and gone, all right, we want to do, a, you know, a song about you. Can you do your Spoon thing? And we will write a song about that, you know, around you, I should say. And, I mean, that's it's just such an eclectic thing to do, isn't it? It'd be like in Australia to get Danny in for... Uh, you know, recording vocals or something like that. If you know who Danny is, um, fair enough. But if you don't, I, I would understand too. But anyway, you know, it's it's just a big step for the band to be going, all right, we're going to be trying this thing here and just see how it goes. Yeah, and you can hear that as well on the other singles, like Film and Black Days. It's a great single. But of course, Black Hole Sun, which I really wanted to talk about for a moment because Black Hole Sun, when it was released and, you know, heard it was... Um, widely regarded as the last great grunge song, you know, of its era, because it kind of signalled the end of times, and it was perfect, because Black Hole Sun felt so uh, abysmal, no, not the right word, I guess, it just it just felt like it was the end of days, like, you know, um, Kurt Cobain was not a good way, I think, actually, I can't remember when this single was released, I think it was after the album was out, though, um, that... You know, it was just basically the last big grunge iconic single. So everyone just kind of uh, gravitated towards this song and said, oh, it's the last bastion, that's it, end of an era. And, for you know, if, if this was going to be the last song that grunge was going to go out on, it, they chose a very good, very good single. So I, I can't complain. Plus, the video clip is weird as shit. If you go look at it, I think it's starting to become a meme again. Or it, sorry, it's starting to become a meme. You know, all these people with their faces going like, ah, and big open jaws and screaming at what is the black hole sun coming to. And, you know, it's very, very weird stuff. It was a great video clip. Very weird. I remember the first time I watched it, it was trippy. It really was. But then there's a few other tracks here that I really want to give a shout out. For example, My Wave, absolute killer hook there. One of my favorite tracks by Soundgarden, to be honest. And... The other ones are, for example, The Day I Tried to Live, another really cool song, but also 4th of July, which one of the persons uh, commented on is an incredible riff, and it really got me thinking again because I went back and listened to it. I, I love 4th of July, but this is Soundgarden just perfecting their doom metal riff, and it's so good. It's such a, it's, it's just so good in that doom metal kind of thing. You know, obviously they kind of took the Black Sabbath thing and just upped the ante. And I think 4th of July is this perfect showcase of, yeah, we could do Doom if we really wanted to. And I guess if you were to look at some of the bands of the era, 
you know, Sleep or a few other bands like this, um, Sun maybe, although they're a bit more drone metal, you know, they definitely could have listened to this and gone, all right, that's, that's the sound that we want to do. You know, an updated Black Sabbath sound. So, yeah, these are a few tracks I just wanted to give a shout out. Because Super Unknown, it's just one of those albums where there is barely a bad track amongst the mix. The only one I can really think of might be the last two tracks, maybe. But, you know, or um, I think it was Limerick might be another one. But anyway, look, there's only a couple of bad songs on here. And I just wanted to give it another shout out for its 30th anniversary. Make sure to go out and listen to it.